What is going on with the media? I talk about social media and your, your situation, but the media as well. Let's start with social media. What's up? Well, we said this, the Transition Integrity Project, you know, warned us they were going to do this, that the social media oligarchs out in Silicon Valley were going to use this to suppress the voices of, uh, of President Trump supporters. I mean, this has been uh, the entire time for the last couple of years, what they've done to take away the fire and the heat that we were able to deliver in 16. But right now, what they're doing is shutting down anything that stands in opposition or anything that wants to, anybody wants to point out the fact that the Democrats uh, in the Democratic Party and their and their allies are trying to steal this election, the victory from President Trump. So they're just out there, you know, crushing people, taking people down off Instagram, shutting down Twitter accounts, they're putting labels on the president of the United States every time he tweets something out. So this is a big problem. It's got to be addressed, uh, I think, after we close on this victory, but we've warned the White House, warned the president, talked about this for a long time. These people are not the friends of the uh, deplorables. They're not the friends of the Trump movement, and they're not friends to the president of the United States. Is, is Fox moving away from President Trump? Look, whatever the business strategy of the, uh, the Murdochs is, their business strategy, they're obviously, I think, see a huge opportunity with becoming much more moderate and, and, and really putting them, you know, the, the uh, presenting the news in a framework where conservatives can uh, can get their uh, can get their hands around it, but that's a business decision. I think what's disturbing is that it's not that you're pushing back on Rudy. It's, it, all this should be pushed back and pushed back hard. I don't think people have any problem with that. It's kind of like Neil Cavuto. It was the snarky way they cut ac cut away from it and didn't want to didn't even want to address it. Uh, those lawsuits had a lot of merit. Uh, they've got a lot of affidavits signed with them. We're going to have more. It should have been discussed and just the snarky way it was it was uh, it was cut away from. I don't think really is up to Fox's standards and particularly the, the audience standards. I mean, look at Fox's numbers are, are dropping through the floor. Steve, let's talk about some of the, the election now, some, some of the things that are going on. We've seen the shenanigans happening. We've seen the videotapes of all the, all the stuff, which may or may not be real. We don't, we don't really know. What do you know uh, as far as talking to the Giuliani camp and some of the people in the White House? What do you know going forward? What are they going to bring forward to try and change what the AP has already called an election for Joe Biden? Remember, the Associated Press and media don't really have any standard uh, standing. With, this is a legal process. It's about certification of the of the votes of the vote by the secretary of states and these governors. The the, the number your um, audience should think about is December 6th and 8th. That between those dates, these votes have to be certified at the state level, and then electors have to be chosen, sent to the state capitals for the electoral college's first meeting on the 14th, 14th of December. If that's not met, if the safe harbor is not met on December 8th, if there's enough certified states certified to get to 270 electoral votes, this whole thing gets kicked to the House of Representatives, where you vote not by individual member, but by state party delegation. Right now, the Republicans control, I think, 28 states, the Democrats 22. So President Trump, they will select the president. President Trump would win in Nancy Pelosi's house on the Congress that's seated on January 3rd. I think it's going to be very difficult. And I think you're just starting to see now these lawsuits come in that are talking about big hunks of ballots that have to be thrown out uh, because of a certain election uh, things about the about the observers. I think even more importantly, you're seeing tons of statistical analysis done and looking at the free flow of that information on election night, that there's just some huge anomalies here. And I think in discovery, that's going to come up. I, I've been saying this for a while. I think some of these states are not going to be able to certify the votes. I don't think the state general assemblies are going to certify the votes to put electors up. I believe this is going to kick, as it looks right now, I think this is going to kick, get kicked into the House of Representatives where Donald J. Trump will be, uh, will be uh, uh, elected. Uh, president of the United States. With a, I just add this only because I have to. I want to be balanced and unbiased here. If it does go to the, to the House of Representatives, and there are 26 or 28 states that are controlled uh, by Republicans, assuming they would go against their state voting totals, that's what it would take. It would take a couple states to say, you know what, I didn't trust it. I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. Uh, Steve, talk to us about the. Well, that, but, but but this is also about the certification of the vote. I think I think the justification would be and the rationale would be is that the, the states could not certify the votes. I think in Pennsylvania, Michigan, there's a, a, ver a terrific lawsuit at, a, at the state level and at the federal level. You're going to see a lot more of these coming out. So I think this is all about the ability to actually, uh, what are these mail-in ballots are actually verifiable, have chain of custody, and can be certified. Mm -hmm. 
Agree. Agree down, down the line. Um, the Dominion voting machines. This seems to be a big issue. We've had Sidney Powell on um, who claims that she knows for a fact that there's a, a back door into the Dominion voting machines and that it may be a, able to be not only hacked but alter the outcome of, of already cast ballots. Do you know anything? What do you know? Well, here's what I do know is the state of Texas has a report out where they rejected on every level the, uh, the Dominion system. And they did that, I think, uh, nine months ago. This Dominion system, as we talk to technology people, there are many questions about this, about the software, the interoperability, and about this backdoor having access to it. So I think you're going to start to see, now you've got to be able to prove all that. It just can't be, you know, some sort of uh, thing you're putting together. But I think Sydney Powell and other team of lawyers and technology people are working that right now. That's why I think you're going to see many more lawsuits coming up about the way this was uh, held, uh, what systems they used, and about the, the the anomalies in these numbers, and so I think the even the more intense lawsuits and the parties of those lawsuits are all about are going to be in the next couple of days. All right, just about a minute and a half or so, Steve. I have left with you the Trump Accountability Project, who who they're basically taking names, ma making a list. Uh, anyone who worked for Trump should, doesn't deserve to get a paycheck in D.C. anymore. Your thoughts? I'm assuming you're on that that list. <laughs> yeah, no, but listen, I think this is the way they want to play. They're trying to put fear around. Uh, the president's around the people around the president it's having definitely having an impact i think you see that there are certain people that are just afraid even though they think that this is a very you know that that we owe it to the country we owe it to the constitution we owe it to this republic to make sure this is a free and fair election i think some people are getting scared off and so the left knows that this is a weapon i i that's why i think people like you know like eric like you and me and Others, they just say, hey, look, we got to do what's right. We're going to we're going to triple down here. We're not going to back off. I mean, the people that work at the war room, people associated with me don't care. We're going to go all the way forward on this. And it's, it's bigger than President Trump. This is about the country. This is about a republic. And this is about democracy. And so we're in for the fight. And you can see it's happening right now. I think you see on many fronts with the recounts going on in Georgia, the closest in Arizona, these lawsuits. I think it's game on. And I'll just leave it as uh, cancel culture wins, Steve, if corporate boardrooms cave. And that's what's been going on. You just need the corporate boardroom to say enough is enough. This is getting out of hand. And stop, stop changing what you do for a living just because someone complains about it. F final thought? Yeah, I, I, I don't think the corporate boardrooms. I think the corporate boardrooms are the center of wokeness. I think what you have to do here, Eric, is close on this victory. President Trump and his supporters won a a, a incredible victory on November 3rd on legitimate real votes, legal votes. We have to close on that victory. We cannot back off. If we back off, corporate America is only going to feel, the wokeness is only going to feel more empowered. All right, Steve Bannon in the war room. Appreciate your time as always, my friend.